Welcome. Uh, what I want to do is show you how to find the endpoint when given one endpoint and another midpoint. And the thing that makes this problem even more kind of confusing is that they're using mixed numbers. So the first immediate thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to rewrite this in improper fractions. And the reason why I want to use improper fractions is because it's very easy for me to add and subtract fractions when I only have a denominator and a numerator. Um, a lot of times, our mixed numbers, they're not, they still don't have the same denominator with their fraction, and it can be very confusing. So a very helpful hint is to convert to improper fractions so you can go ahead and rewrite the two points. Um, I don't want to convert to decimal because uh, that means I might start approximating with depending on my decimal point or how much I approximate the numbers, and I could start um, getting answers that are not going to be exactly accurate. So I'm going to want to convert these to improper or to improper fractions first. To to convert to improper fractions, you take your denominator, multiply it by your whole number, and then add your um, add the numerator. So this point I can rewrite as negative two comma six times one is six plus five is eleven. This point I can write as a negative 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 1 is 4. Okay, so remember, if we have the midpoint and the endpoint, immediately the first thing I think about a midpoint is, let's just write down the formula. Forget about trying to figure out the problem, just write down the formula. So the formula for a midpoint, if you remember, is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y2 plus y1 over 2, or it doesn't matter, y1 plus y2 will be consistent. Right? So we got to add those two points up and then divide by 2 to find your each coordinate. Well, so what we're done, what we've been done, what we've had is we've been given two points. And I also like to draw a picture just so I kind of have a visual understanding of where I'm trying to go. So I plot this point, which is at negative 2, up one. 1 and 5, 6, which is almost at 2, which is almost at positive 2. Then I go and plot my second point, which is, no, 11, 6, which is, yeah, it's almost at 2. Okay. Then my second point is negative 1 third, negative 1 and 1 third, and then down negative 1.5. It's going to look something like that. All right, so what I have here is I have my distance from my end point to my midpoint, and we're going to be looking something like that where this is your midpoint, right? It's halfway there. So to find an end point, what I need to do is I need to look at, well, if I can figure out the distance from my end point to my midpoint, then all I need to do is add that distance again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a formula. And rather than doing both points at the same time, I'm going to separate this. I'm going to say the midpoint of the x-coordinates are x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And the midpoints of the y-coordinates are y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Right? So I'm just splitting this up into two different equations. Because I, right now I'm, I could find the coordinate point, but I would just want to, I'm going to find these out individually. So now we need to plug in what is it we do know, right? So let's figure out what is going to be our, um, first of all, our midpoint, which is going to be m. So let's do the x-coordinates. Um, and it doesn't matter if you label these as x1 or x2. Let's label the endpoint as x1 and y1. So the midpoint is going to be your m. So for x values, I have a negative 4 thirds equals a negative 2 plus x2 over 2. So now what I'm going to have to do to solve this equation is just solve for x2, or the x value of my endpoint, which is my other point. So my endpoint that I'm going to try to find, right, here's the other endpoint, is going to be x2 comma y2. So therefore, to solve for this, I first need to get rid of the denominator. So I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. 2 times your fraction, you just multiply 2 times your numerator, which give me negative 8 over 3 equals negative 2 plus x2. Now the next thing I need to do is add, get rid of this negative 2. So I'm going to add a 2 to 
to both sides. So what I have is 2, getting a little low here, plus a negative, so it's really 2 minus 8 thirds equals x2. Well, I need to get these to be the same denominator, right? So really, when I multiply this, you can really put the 2 over the 1. But to get these to be the same denominator, I need to multiply by 3 over 3. So in doing that, I get 6, all right, 6 over 3 minus 8 thirds, which equals a negative 2 thirds comma, all right, which is the value of x2. So I'm going to say x2 is now a negative 2 thirds. Whew. So let's go ahead and do that now for y2, exact same process. M is my midpoint for the y coordinates, which will be a negative 3 halves. Uh, y1 is going to be the y coordinate, which will be 11 6. So the same thing, I'm going to solve for y2. I undo my operations, multiply by 2 on both sides, multiply across, negative 6 over 2 equals 11 over 6 plus y2. I know you can leave this as a whole number. Right? Negative 6 divided by 2 is 3. But leave it as a fraction until you're all complete with your fractions. It's going to help you multiply or help you combine your fractions. So now I have 11 6 plus y squared. To get rid of the 11 6, I'm going to subtract 11 6. So therefore, I have a negative 11 6 minus 6 over 2 equals y squared. Well, again, you notice that these are not the same denominators. So to get these to be the same denominators, I need to, again to multiply by um, 3 on the numerator and the denominator. So I multiply by 3 on the numerator and denominator to get this to be uh, 6. So therefore, I'll now have 11 over 6 minus 6 times 3 is 18, which equals y squared. Well, a negative 11 minus 18 is a negative it's a negative 29 over 6, which equals y squared. So my answer over here, I can write a negative 29 over 6, which is my y2, not my y squared. And if you want to write that as an uh, improper fraction, you could also just say that uh, your endpoint would be, so to write this in a broad fraction, say, all right, how many times is 6 going to 29 as a whole number? Well, 6 goes to 29 four times, and they're with the remainder of 5. So you could also write it as negative 2 thirds, comma, a negative 4, and 5 6. So there you go. There's two ways to represent the answer, and a lot of work for you. Thanks.